So uh, just uh, as a way of introduction, I'd just like to, uh, to welcome the, uh, the Honourable Josh Frydenberg here, representing the, uh, the Prime Minister here today for this significant announcement and, the, uh, and the, uh, obviously the significant uh, partnership uh, and support that we have from our, our federal colleagues. Also, uh, we have uh, Deputy Commissioner Ross Barnett, who will be able to speak to you on some operational matters, as well as uh, Assistant Commissioner Katarina Carroll, who uh, is in charge of the uh, G20 operational uh, uh, facilities, but also the major operation over the coming months. And uh, Queensland certainly is well ahead of our G20 preparations, ensuring that we have already have the legislation in place. We have the, as you'll see today, the infrastructure in place. And more than important, we have the partnerships and, uh, and the, as well as the communication strategies to ensure that Queensland has a safe G20, but also a friendly G20 to the many thousands of delegates that will come from all around the world. And so we've got approximately 4,000 uh, officials and 3,000 media representatives coming here to showcase Brisbane and Queensland as a safe state, a great state, also a great economy for them to uh, invest in the future. And we want to ensure that uh, not just our visitors enjoy G20, but also all Queenslanders and the rest of Australia can see this event as a showcase to exhibit to the rest of the world. This particular uh, operational communication command centre that we have here is world first, it's state of the art. And as a government, we said that we would be revitalising frontline services. And this is the continuation of that revitalisation of bringing the Queensland Police Service into the 21st century and ensuring that we are ahead of many police services right around the whole of the world. You'll see here today is the partnership, as I said, between the Queensland Police Service, the Australian Federal uh, Police Services, the Australian Defence Services, as well as other agencies, both on a state, federal and local government uh, level, including the Brisbane City Council, where we have those direct linkages into what's happening on the streets of Brisbane. But not just what's happening on the streets of Brisbane, but how police and obviously other officials can ensure that uh, those dangers are reduced for the benefit of the whole of the community. I'll just ask uh, the Honourable uh, Joss Breidenberg to say some words, please. Well, thank you very much, Minister. It's a great pleasure to join you here for this announcement. And Deputy Commissioner Barnett and Assistant Commissioner Carroll, uh, representing my uh, parliamentary colleague, uh, Michael Keenan, and uh, also my good friend and Brisbane uh, uh, member, Teresa Gambaro. Uh, today is an important day uh, because uh, we are making good strides forward in ensuring that the G20, the most important uh, meeting, international meeting that Australia has ever held is done in a way that is secure and safe for not just the leaders but for the people of Brisbane and for Queensland. As the Minister said, this is a huge gathering. Uh, 4,000 uh, delegates, 3,000 media representatives, the world's 20 uh, leading uh, political leaders from around the world including President Obama from the United States and President Xi Jinping from China and many, many others. Uh, it is a great opportunity for Brisbane, it's a great opportunity for Queensland, and it's a great opportunity for Australia. Uh, just like with other major meetings, whether it's been APEC or Chogham or international events like the Olympics and the Commonwealth Games, uh, the security component of those events have been extremely important. And the opening, the official opening today of this QPS um, major facility uh, coordination Centre is extremely uh, important in ensuring the safety of uh, the event. Uh, it's also a major financial commitment for the federal government. Uh, we have contributed more than $97 million to ensure the security of the G20. Uh, $4.5 million has gone towards this facility. And as you can see, it's state of the art, mm. linking into CCTV. Uh, providing uh, networking within the various conference rooms and ensuring that the various uh, law enforcement uh, agencies and intelligence agencies that will operate out of here, the Australian Federal Police, the Defence Force, um, ASIO and of course um, Queensland Police and more than 5,000 may I say uh, police officers and uh, law enforcement personnel 
from not just around Australia but also internationally. It's a major gathering. It needs to be safe and secure. It will be, uh, it will be as a result of a facility like this. I'd like to thank um, the Queensland Government and particularly the Premier, uh, Campbell Newman, who's worked very closely with the Prime Minister, Tony Abbott, uh, in the preparations for this event, as well as uh, with the Mayor of the Brisbane City Council, uh, because they're an important uh, part of the organisation for the G20. It's an exciting time uh, and we look forward to working with Jack, with you, uh, with your, um, your colleagues to ensure a great success for Australia and for Queensland when the G20 arrives. Thank you, uh, Josh. Is, uh, I'll just put on to, uh, to Deputy Commissioner in a short period of time, but this is a world-class leading facility that will uh, stay the test of time through the G20 and showcase Australia as a leader in the security of major events, but it'll also give a great deal of peace of mind for Queenslanders and Australia leading forward. And I'd just like to particularly commend and thank the Australian Federal Government, the Prime Minister, yourself, Josh, for this uh, commitment, uh, not just in funding, but as you'll see through this centre, it's the partnership in relation to working together as a team to get the safest result for all the people in our different communities. It's about that information sharing. It's also about ensuring that uh, the different departments are working together and linked together for the first time. You won't have people in different rooms trying to communicate. They'll be linked directly to each other for the first time, which will uh, see a, uh, a distinctive advantage and uh, a distinctive uh, uh, driven force of, uh, of coordination to ensure that these games are kept in a safe as possible manner but also ensure that the, the, the rest of the world looking in will see uh, the, uh, the quality of the, uh, the events that are able to be held here in Australia but also the type of security and the sense of safety that individuals will have and it will showcase Queensland and Australia as a safe place to do business with but also to come and visit. So Deputy Commissioner if you've got any operational? Uh, thank you Minister. Uh, operation Southern Cross will be the largest peacetime security operation in Australia's history. As has already been mentioned uh, that will require a commitment of uh, over five and a half thousand police officers. The vast majority of those will be drawn from uh, across the QPS but I want to acknowledge we've had significant support from the Australian Federal Police, every other state jurisdiction and New Zealand in contributing staff uh, to that commitment. A significant part of the security responsibility that has been placed upon us and which, which we, uh, we welcome, uh, we understand the gravity of the situation. The ability to be able to discharge that function effectively will be helped significantly by this facility in which we are meeting today. I want to thank uh, and acknowledge the Federal Government and the State Government for their financial and other support in making this facility reality. This police operations centre is, as the Minister said, absolutely state of the art and the best in Australia. We're very proud of it. We look forward uh, to showing it to you, the many facilities uh, that it does have. What it does give us as a permanent legacy benefit for the Queensland Police once G20 is over is an integrated communications and command centre that has uh, hardwired in um, our connections to all of the other major agencies with whom we do business. So for instance, when we uh, need to gather for a major exercise or a major event, uh, agencies such as Ambulance, Fire, ADF, uh, ASIO, and a range of other partners that we do business with on a daily basis will already have secure communications wired in to this facility. So when you get the opportunity to see it, it is fantastic, it's state of the art, and we look forward to being able to showcase it to you. Thank you. Okay, any questions? Oh, Deputy Commissioner, uh, <coughs> to, to, uh, Sydney's 2007 APEC summit that was also a $100 million affair, it's criticised because too many streets were blocked off. What lessons have you learned from the 2007 APEC summit in preparing for Brisbane? Well, in our security preparations for this event, we have looked at similar events that have been held, not only in Australia, but around the world. Mm and have learnt uh, the lessons from the way that uh, those events have been conducted and all of the lessons from APEC and every other G20 and every other significant event, security event that's been held has been carefully considered in our security planning for this event. Carl, but on that point though, I mean APEC was breached by the Chasers team. Uh, how, what, what was the major mistake of APEC which won't be repeated in Brisbane? 
well, I'm not going to look backwards at what mistakes, if there were any, were made by other jurisdictions in other events. All I'll say to you is that we have examined all of those and our security planning, uh, we think, is, uh, is an amalgamation of best practice from around the world and we're confident that we'll be able to provide a safe, secure and dignified environment for the top leaders of the world when they come to Brisbane in mid-November. How will this um, centre be used after the G20? Uh, we, it, it's a great legacy benefit for us so that when we have usual events like River Fire, Anzac Day, um, New Year's Eve, those sorts of things, we have uh, the most fantastic command and control facility with uh, CCTV and other outreach throughout uh, the South East Queensland and we'll be able to use this regularly and uh, for the decades to come. That won't be much for no, definitely no, not. No. Well, I think just for your bit there, Robin, is uh, if you would have seen the uh, the communication centre which we inherited two years ago, it was like from a scene from Solo One, you know, with the old motorbike riders with the uh, the police departments, whereas you're actually coming into a uh, you know a most state of the art uh, scene from uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> to, to to say the least, and uh, that's what it's all about. As we said there, it's about. Uh, making sure that we keep working on revitalising frontline services and this here today will showcase as, as well as what we, we're doing with G20 but what we are doing with the whole revitalisation and, and technology now that the QPS has and we're now becoming world leaders in investigation and that's uh, being seen in the results that we have in uh, very serious crimes being solved recently. Uh, Ross, will there be snipers in the roof? <coughs> You can rest assured that uh, the security overlay that we put in place will have elements from the, the Commonwealth and the state. Uh, we're not going to broadcast all of our security planning for obvious reasons, but, but can I say that we recognise uh, the, the terrorist threat that uh, currently exists uh, in this country and uh, we'll take all the necessary precautions, but we're not going to make all of those precautions uh, mm -hmm. uh, available to the public and I'm sure you understand the reasons why. But snipers are normally stationed on roofs though, aren't they, in these kind of events? Uh, look, as I said, um, this is not a how-to session for people who are looking to breach the security at G20. I just want to give reassurance that we have carefully considered all of the possible contingencies mm -hmm. and have factored all of those uh, elements into our planning. How valuable a dress rehearsal was the recent royal visit? Um, considering that it was going to occur in the same environment uh, around the BCEC, uh, it was uh, very valuable for us. We'll also be doing a range of exercises to uh, test our capabilities here, both in the Joint Intelligence Centre downstairs and in the Police Operations Centre here. There'll be rolling exercises over the next few months to make sure that when we get to G20, we're as fully prepared and exercised as we possibly can be. You're running out scenarios at the moment, Claire was saying, in, in the nerve centre. Can you tell us, I mean, these are real life scenarios, supposedly. Uh, look, we've been doing uh, scenario training uh, around uh, possible but fictitious uh, events. Uh, today and tomorrow is to familiarise our commanders with the new technology they'll have access to here. And then over the weekend we'll be doing, uh, we'll be running a scenario exercise uh, just to try and replicate the feel and tempo of activity that will be occurring during the G20, which will be significant. So security breaches or a possible attack or anti-government protests, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, look, um, in uh, concert with the Commonwealth Government, uh, they funded a range of exercises for us as well. So that's been rolling for about the last 12 months. We've had discussion exercises, and we will increase the intensity and frequency of those exercises as we get closer to the event. Once the G20 is underway, probably the lead up week, I'm guessing, um, how will be manned round the clock, and what agencies will be, be, be in there? Look, I'm happy, uh, I just want to acknowledge Sorry. Assistant Commissioner <laughs> Katerina <laughs> Carroll, sure. who is, uh, well, I'll be the overall commander, but Katerina is the uh, operational commander for G20 has been working on the planning for this event for the last two years with a uh, large and highly dedicated team, uh, including also we have partners at, at the uh, Commonwealth G20 Task Force who have been invaluable in assisting our planning and also this, the uh, State Government uh, Coordination Unit. So we have representatives from all of those people here. But uh, Katarina has done an outstanding job in getting our preparations to this date where we're comfortable mm -hmm. where, with where we're at. We're in no way complacent, but we feel that we're on track with our security planning. So I'll hand over to Katarina if you might. Katarina, let's get you to come in a minute. Here, um, just to answer yeah. Uh, yeah. who will be in this um, police yeah. operations centre, it's literally every agency that we deal with. So the boss has already touched on Queensland Fire, um, Ambulance, um, ADF, AFP, ASIO. So every law enforcement, every security agency and all levels of government. And just to add, um, it is Prime Minister and Cabinet um, an event and obviously funded by them and the relationship has been quite exceptional. 
And for us, I think the most pleasing part about this is we've been able to work quite quickly to get to this point, and we still have some six and a half months that we can test and exercise before we deliver the operation. How much pressure is being felt considering the magnitude of the leaders who are coming? How much pressure is being felt to get this right? I think there is a lot of pressure to get this right. Uh, we've been all over the world to look at uh, past events similar to this, um, not only within our country, as APEC was mentioned, but also other G20s. But certainly planning has been well underway now for 18 months and there's still six and a half months to go. We're quite confident that we are travelling along very well, but as you know, six months will go very, very quickly and the event will be upon us. Mr. Frydenberg, you mentioned that um, $97 million was going towards security. Hmm. Um, the, the overall cost of the G20 is planned to be about $400 million. Just over, yeah. What, what's the rest of that? What's the other $300 million? Oh, there, there, is, there is lots of um, expenses that are incurred in promoting the event, um, ensuring that the uh, proper facilities here, because as we talked about, you've got 4,000 delegates, you've got to find accommodation for them, um, as well as the media centre, and as you know, it's going to be uh, held at the convention centre um, where it, there's just going to be a huge amount of preparation. So the costs add up, um, but the security component of it is significant. I just want to emphasise that the Prime Minister recently had a briefing on the security preparations for the G20 um, from the Deputy Commissioner and the Assistant Commissioner and, and the various other uh, federal agencies that were involved and he was very comfortable and pleased with the progress that has been made today. But he also wanted to emphasise to the people of Queensland that we're not seeking to lock down Brisbane, far from it. This is a wonderful event to showcase Brisbane and, uh, and Queensland and Australia. And so we very much want to ensure that the people of Brisbane can go about their normal business, but at the same time we can have um, these heads of state join us for the, these very important um, discussions uh, uh, around how they're going to improve the economic, um, the economic governance around the world, how they're going to deal with um, some of the other major uh, fiscal challenges that will be discussed around that table. So it's a very important point to, to, to emphasise. Um, this is going to be done in conjunction with the people of Brisbane. Um, the, uh, the law enforcement agencies are bearing that in mind and that is very much the wish of the Prime Minister. Oh, on that point you just raised, you don't want to lock <coughs> Brisbane down. I sure. mean, Sydney was criticised seven years ago mm. for blocking off so many streets. It got ridiculous, you couldn't walk in the city mm. centre. Would you try and not make it so ridiculous like it was in Sydney seven years ago? Well, I understand there's going to be a public holiday in the lead up and, and, um, and various arrangements will be made. I mean, of course, there are going to have to be some restrictions that you're going to need to put in place to ensure um, that uh, the the various uh, leaders are able to move uh, within within the the area and between between events. But as far as possible, uh, we are going to ensure that um, normal business can be done, and that the people of Brisbane uh, do not find um, that this is a major imposition. Uh, and may I say that the importance of this meeting on that weekend, November 15, 16, in Brisbane, is going to produce lasting benefits to the state of Queensland. We are looking to showcase Queensland and showcase Australia to the thousands of people that are here, focusing on our resource sector, focusing on our agriculture sector, focusing on our tourism and education sector. It is hoped that the messages that will be conveyed, that the information that will be given, will lead to multi-million dollar contracts in time, um, hundreds of thousands of uh, visitors coming to Australia uh, in time, and that will produce lasting benefits for not just this state, but for the country. We've been told that 5,000 police will be <coughs> based here for G20. How many Defence Force personnel? Well, that might be kept under, uh, under wraps in terms of um, the security preparations, but the front line is the police, and they're the ones uh, who are going to be responsible for ensuring that the security of the, uh, of the G20 event uh, is guaranteed. The new Indonesian president uh, will probably get sworn <coughs> in October, so this will be the first major event for whoever the new Indonesian president is. How important will this G20 be for Australia's ties with Indonesia? Well, as you know, there's also the East Asia Summit and the APEC meeting around um, the, the, the fortnight that involves also the G20. So it may not be the first event uh, that, uh, that the new Indonesian president attends, but indeed it may be the first time they visit Australia. Um, look, the Indonesia-Australia bilateral relationship is, is very important um, 
uh, SBY, Cecilio Bang Bang Yudiono, the current president of Indonesia, has been a great friend of Australia, has visited here uh, like his predecessors, and the Prime Minister has obviously visited um, Jakarta since assuming office. Um, so we look forward to continuing that relationship and very much welcoming our friends from Indonesia for the G20 summit. Minister, you've got, some, Minister, you've got some community forums coming up today and tomorrow. What, what, are, what are they for? What questions do you think people need answers to? Look, we're going to continue our community forums and, uh, and what we're wanting is, as, as well as uh, we understand there will be certain uh, levels of protest at a G20 event and that's why we're getting out there and informing the community, letting them know where there is places to, for them to go, where there is uh, areas uh, that they can feel also safe in there as well to have the, uh, their free speech. But uh, also the most important thing is to know that they are part of our community as well and they will be certainly catered for in a way. And as the, uh, <coughs> as the uh, Honourable Member just stated, is this will be a special G20 event for the whole of Australia to showcase this great nation. But it will be a great opportunity for the Queensland Police Service and the uh, assisting agencies to shine as well. So uh, whilst uh, it is going to be obviously uh, a, a, a interesting and, uh, and, uh, and a nervous time, as you would imagine, for uh, all services, it is a great time for them to be able to showcase the great talents and, uh, and security measures that we have in place. So projects like we saw with the Aboriginal, the small Aboriginal group mm. during the Royal Visit, what you're saying is you're, you're going to be planning, they, they can plan those and be in a certain place to democratically yeah. say what they want. But that, that's correct, but I'll get the operators. Katarina is also looking at that as We're well. meeting with all protest groups at mm. the moment, so there is a committee in place between the Queensland Police Service and the Brisbane City Council who are working together to accommodate um, those needs. From the very outset, it has been our philosophy to engage with everyone that will be impacted by G20. So protest groups, uh, residents, businesses, you name it. And that's one of the reasons why we're having this um, public forum that's been hosted by Prime Minister and Cabinet, is for people that really want to know what the event is about, how they're going to be impacted, they really should come to that forum. In opening the Senate today, obviously we've just been watching all this, these camera angles here, pretty much got the, the city covered. What message do you, you send to those who perhaps want to make trouble, the anarchists, etc.? Look, what we're saying is, look, we will meet with these groups and in, try and ensure as much as we can that all protests are lawful and peaceful. However, there will become a point though, if there is disruption, there is damage, and there is destruction, that we will take affirmative action. I think everyone knows that doesn't matter what you do these days, you're under some sort of surveillance, some sort of CCTV, whether it be on your cameras, whether it be you know, the cameras that are provided by the City Council or other agencies, people do need to know that we all want a safe and secure G20, not just for the delegations, but for the community and the residents of Brisbane as well. We saw in, G in Toronto and London that, uh, that not all of those protesters want to come to the table beforehand. Will there be kettling if, uh, if things go, uh, you know, if, if they do become violent and aggressive, will, will there be kettling or will you go? We don't use the term kettling in Queensland. In fact, it's a form of um, containment. We don't intend using that. You know, we're very upfront about how we want to go about business. We want to engage. We want to communicate. We want to have that trust when we go into this, into this operation with those groups. So really, if there are groups that don't want to engage with us, we'll be out engaging with them. And Mr. Frydenberg, Russia faces a raft of international sanctions, and correct me if I'm wrong, including possible suspension from the G7. How likely is Vladimir Putin's appearance at the G20? Look, we just have to wait and see what uh, transpires. I mean, you're right in terms of uh, recent developments in the Crimea uh, and, the, and the, the sanctions that have followed. But let's just wait and see what happens. I mean, primarily the G20 focuses on economic issues, and the Treasurer, Joe Hockey, has been meeting with his uh, finance counterparts, and we have a very advanced and comprehensive agenda around trade, around tax reform, around financial governance. Um, but as we saw in the last G20 meeting, which was in Russia, um, the Syrian conflict became a major issue for discussion. So we just do not know what will be the major issue come November. Uh, but uh, uh, as you say, uh, Vladimir Putin and, and Russia uh, a member of the G20, and I suppose if they want to come, they will come. So with the involvement of the ADF, should we expect to see tanks in the street? <laughs> I'd absolutely say no to that. Um, <laughs> look, I, I just want to emphasise here uh, that 
that this is, this is a great opportunity for Queensland. And when we hear about potential protesters and the like, sure, uh, people can voice their opinions, but the vast majority of Queenslanders should be celebrating this opportunity and encouraging um, the community to get behind it and saying to those protesters, don't hijack our event. Don't hijack our opportunity to put Brisbane on the international map. And that's what this is. It's an incredible opportunity for this state and for the country to host the 20 leaders from the leading nations as well as the European Union, the heads of international organisations like the United Nations, like the IMF, like the World Bank, will all be here in, 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 uh, in Brisbane, together with a vast array uh, of media representatives from around the world. Uh, we are taking the necessary precautions. It's our responsibility as a federal government to ensure that these international leaders um, are able to conduct their business in a safe and secure environment. We're working very effectively with our state counterparts in that regard. Um, but uh, I want to just emphasise this is a celebration. This event is a great opportunity. This is not going to be an overbearing security ADF type environment. This is not that. This is an opportunity to have world leaders come together for constructive discussions in this great city of Brisbane. I've got another point. Uh, the uh, Lady <coughs> Abbott's been criticised for breaking an election promise with the uh, with deficit levy. How concerned are you about that? And sh should, it be, should it be scrapped? Well, let's not uh, get ahead of ourselves. The budget is still to come. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of speculation uh, in, in, the, uh, in the media about what will or will not be contained in the budget. Uh, we have a big task ahead of us. Uh, we were given um, cumulative deficits uh, totaling $123 billion, um, projected deficits out to $667 billion. The Australian people elected us um, to fix this mess. Uh, we will um, announce a number of initiatives in the budget will go, which will go towards um, that aim of bringing the budget back into balance. It's a long and arduous task. It's not popular. If you go back to 1996 when John Howard came into office in his first budget, uh, he cut spending across the board by 1% of GDP and in 1997 by 1.2% of GDP while quarantining defence is the only area that was saved from those spending cuts. This is tough but necessary action for Australia and in doing so we will ensure that the economic environment for Australians, the job opportunities for Australians in the future, will be much better as a result. Well, you know what you said is a terrible <coughs> idea, you should just cut spending rather than putting uh, levies on we, we, we just quickly stick to, does anyone have any operation, uh, questions on the operations? I just want to ask Katrina, we've seen protests in Melbourne, for example, that have gone out of control really quickly, you know, spikes in police forces, legs and all sorts of things. Um, obviously, you're, as you said, you're prepared for anything in yeah. that, that case. You're obviously talking from the, the G... 2006, I suppose. Yes, yes, yes. We, we certainly have studied all those and learnt from them. Yes. We're prepared for those actions. The environment's changed a lot since then. So I keep um, harping on about the fact that we are engaging with these groups already. We, we know people that want to protest. We also keep reiterating that, you know, lawful and peaceful protests will be supported. However, if there is that certain, you know, line in the sand that is drawn and they step over that, there has to be take action taken. The reality is we have... 20 of world leaders in our city to protect and we have an obligation to do so. So people need to understand that. But we have made every effort to engage with anyone that's going to be affected by G20 and we will continue to do so. I just say, can I just follow up on that, uh, just in terms of the comments that were made earlier by Mr Friedenberg. The QPS clearly understands the Prime Minister's intent about how this event, how we'd like this event to be run, the look and feel of it. So you can rest assured that the security measures that are put in place will be necessary but they will not be oppressive and we'll be very disappointed after the event if there is criticism that the security overlay that's put in place uh, wasn't deemed appropriate for the circumstances. What did you think when you saw recent uh, pursuit vision yesterday and the day before that? Yeah, I'm happy to do that, but is there anything else just on G20? Just on the way just, well, I'll come, I'll the economic environment. Yeah. In, in this economic environment that's so abominable, how affordable is the G20? Well, it's a, uh, it is absolutely affordable, and as you know, it was a commitment um, by the, the previous government because the spin-offs for the Australian economy and for the community will be much greater than that particular expenditure that has been committed. Um, this is a unique opportunity. Countries all around the world um, are jealous of Australia for being able to host 
such a great meeting of world leaders. So I, I'm very confident that, um, that, this, that this meeting will go off uh, successfully, um, that the, uh, the discussions will be um, constructive and productive, and that the benefits to the people of Queensland and Australia will be both lasting and real.